Hi learners, it's Em from Sano Nerds, and this video is going to cover the face and the neck looking at lymph node. Lymph nodes are kind of one of those interesting things. A lot of times we're doing lymph node ultrasounds of the face and neck because somebody can feel them, they're a palpable lump, but they also are often seen while we're doing our other routine face and neck ultrasounds. Maybe you're doing a thyroid and need a scan through the lateral neck. Doing a carotid, you see a lymph node as you go by. So it's important to know what normal looks like because as you see those lymph nodes, it's going to be vital that you are evaluating, does that lymph node look normal or is this an incidental finding that requires further imaging? So let's take a look at the normal anatomy of a lymph node and a couple of pictures of what normal lymph nodes look like. Lymph nodes are surprisingly similar to very basic anatomy of the kidney. They are shaped like a bean and they have a hilus. At the hilus is an efferent lymphatic vessel and a small vein, both of which are exiting. There's also a small artery that's entering. On the periphery, afferent lymphatic vessels enter. The lymphatic vessels connect lymph nodes to one another, and these lymph channels are not really appreciated by ultrasound, but that small hilar vein and artery are. We have about 600 lymph nodes all throughout our body, and some exist kind of as a single node, but others are really closely connected in groups called chains. These groups or chains are typically referred to by their anatomical location. So we're gonna to focus today on the cervical and occipital lymph nodes. When we're evaluating the head and the neck lymph nodes, uh, we're gonna see that they really run more on the lateral aspect of the head, neck, and face. So we've got uh, kind of these ones that run along the jaw line here. We are going to see a few that actually sit within the parotid gland. Uh, number seven here is the submandibular area, and then we have the submental area, which is kind of that soft tissue triangle right underneath the chin. These ones might be pretty common as we're looking at the thyroid gland if we sweep up, we're gonna run right into that submandibular gland and the lymph nodes that are along with it. Now more on the lateral side of the neck, we will see these groups, 5, 11, 9, 12, 13. These are all cervical groups. They run right with the sternocleidomastoid uh, with the internal jugular vein. So these are gonna be uh, commonly seen in our carotid imaging that we might do. Depending on the window that you're using, if you're doing a dedicated salivary gland exam or a thyroid exam, or a carotid exam, you are going to see lymph nodes somewhere in the area. So it's easy to see how lymph nodes could be a very frequent incidental finding when we're doing any sort of thyroid or carotid work on the neck. So what do the lymph nodes do? Well, lymph, also called lymphatic fluid, is a collection of extra fluid that drains from cells and tissues. And this is gonna be fluid that's not reabsorbed into the capillaries, plus some other substances. So those other substances include things like proteins, minerals, fats, nutrients, damaged cells, cancer cells, and foreign invaders like bacteria, viruses, etc. Lymph is also going to transport infection-fighting white blood cells or lymphocytes. So this large network really helps to bring disease-fighting cells around the body and when there's an area undergoing some sort of infection, it isn't uncommon for the lymph nodes to kind of swell near the area of this infection. So for example, if a person has strep throat or tonsillitis or maybe like a tooth infection, the neck lymph nodes might become enlarged. Unfortunately, that network also serves as a pathway for cancer to spread throughout the body. Typically, involvement of lymph nodes increases the cancer staging as the cancer can spread more easily to distant locations. Normal cervical lymph nodes have many key characteristics. This includes taking on more of an oval shape as opposed to round. We're looking at them to be more symmetrical. So do they have an even cortex that's thin and homogenous all the way around it? We also want to identify a very central echogenic hilum. And then we're gonna use color flow on any lymph nodes that we are evaluating. And we're hoping to see just that one artery and one vein coming into the hilum of the lymph node. And then when we measure on the short axis, we expect that these are less than one centimeter in width. 
So here we have an example of a very, very normal appearing lymph node. This is in the neck. We can see the sternocleidomastoid muscle here. We can see the strap muscles, the carotid artery, it looks like here. And this is our lymph node. So right in the center here is this very echogenic area, this line through the middle. This is the echogenic central hilum that we talk about. This is made of fat, and so it has a very bright appearance on ultrasound. Around it is a more hypoechoic cortex. And this is what we expect to see, a very thin, homogeneous, symmetrical, hypoechoic cortex surrounding that echogenic central hilum. So again, here's another example of a normal lymph node found in the neck. We have mostly an oval shape to the lymph node. We're seeing that the cortex is hypoechoic, symmetrical, thin, and it surrounds a fatty echogenic hilum. Now, if we were to put color on this lymph node, we would expect to see the vein exiting and the artery entering at the hilum. As you're sweeping through the neck, remember, just double check all those things you know to be normal for lymph nodes. Double check each lymph node. Does it show those characteristics? Again, if we came across something like this, we'd say, yes, it's got a fatty hilum. That's awesome. That's a really good first step. Cortex looks really good. It's hypochoic. It's homogeneous. It's thin. It's symmetrical. That also looks very normal. Put color on it. We'll see higher blood flow. Again, proving that it's normal. The last step then is to evaluate the size of the lymph node. Now, if you look at it and you think, yep, that's probably pretty normal, throw some calipers on, you get normal measurements. Probably don't really need to document the lymph node unless you're mapping lymph nodes or maybe doing like a pre-op or a post-op scan. With the measurements, we have to keep in mind that the lymph nodes are going to change depending on what's going on in the body. So we know that lymph nodes enlarge if there's an infection nearby. So again, in the neck if, say, somebody just had an upper respiratory infection. There's a chance that their neck lymph nodes are going to be large. That's because they're busy fighting off the infection, and we call these reactive lymph nodes. But we're still going to see that they maintain a normal ratio and that normal oval shape. So let's take a look at this one on the left here. This is normal. We've got a length of 2.3 centimeters, and we've got a width of 0.8 centimeters. If we take 2.3 and divide it by 0.8, we get a ratio of 2.875. Now this is greater than two, so this is normal. Now let's say we come across a one centimeter lymph node. When we turn long on it, if we get like a 3.3 centimeter length, that still keeps us in that above two range. So it's maintaining a normal ratio. Now where we start to get concerned is when the length and the width start to even out. So we are looking at lymph nodes that take on a little bit more of a rounder shape in both planes. So if we get a one and a half centimeter width and a 1.8 centimeter length, when we divide 1.8 by 1.5, we get a ratio of 1.2. And this is abnormal because the ratio is now less than two. So as we're looking through, if we see anything over one centimeter, we're gonna stop and we're gonna look at it. We're gonna go through our checklist, make sure everything looks normal or does it clearly look abnormal just through our checklist? And then we're going to look at measurements. If it's on the larger side but still falls into a ratio of two or more, then it's probably just a reactive lymph node. However, if we are getting that ratio under two, we are much more concerned about it being an abnormal lymph node and we definitely need to document those. So size isn't everything. That ratio plays a really big role in it. The appearance of it plays a really big role in it. But as you're going through anything over a centimeter, stop and take a closer look. Because most of the neck and face structures are very superficial, we should be using a high frequency transducer, especially when we are looking at lymph nodes and want to really evaluate their ultrasound appearance. For all lymph nodes of interest, we're definitely going to be getting sagittal images and transverse images. We want to make sure we're getting our measurements on them, color to show that hyalur flow, cine clips if we need them, and then we'll make sure that we grab our palpable lump images. So when a patient can point to a very discreet area, label the ultrasound image as palpable lump, and then of course your right side, left side, superior, inferior, where you are on the body. When scanning a palpable lump, 
I always ask the patient to put one finger where they're feeling that lump. Sometimes you'll get people that just kind of point through their whole neck, and that's not really how lymph nodes present. They typically are a very discreet lump that they can feel, which is most likely what brought them into the doctor in the first place. Doctor confirms, yes, I can also feel that. Let's go ahead and get an ultrasound of it. I usually start with where the patient has the palpable lump, make sure that I get my sagittal, transverse, measurement, color pictures of the palpable lump, and then I do evaluate the rest of the side looking for any other abnormal or enlarged lymph nodes in the area. To be even more precise about where a lymph node is located, we should use the levels of the cervical neck. This allows for whoever's reading our ultrasound and maybe comparing it to a CT to correlate a little bit better between the two modalities. It also gives whoever's following up our exam, maybe they're doing a biopsy of a lymph node, they'll know exactly where to look for it, or if they're following up to see if things have improved, then they know exactly where to look uh, in that instance as well. So oftentimes I'll take a picture like this into the ultrasound room with me, especially if I'm doing lymph node mapping, so I can use this again as a map and a guideline for labeling my images. So let's say for example, there's a large lymph node just underneath the ear, I would label that as transverse right level 2B. And then I would take my transverse images and measurements. And then I would switch that to a sagittal, take my long measurements, keeping that same right 2B level annotation on my screen. Some places even prefer just having cine clips through each one. So you can do like a superior to inferior transverse clip of level 2B, starting at the ear and going down to the hyoid bone and then you would change your annotation to level three and do a superior to inferior clip of this area. Same idea, you can go uh, 5A, superior to inferior, just being more posterior on the neck, 5B, getting into some of those supraclavicular lymph nodes. So you can see how this can serve as a much clearer or a much more precise label instead of saying superior neck, because that could really be anything up here, or lateral neck could really be anything along the side of it. Now using the levels is definitely a more precise way to describe where you are seeing lymph nodes, but you also have the option to use image markers on your screen, which can also aid, especially if you're not 100% sure what level that you're in, you can mark it on the neck for whoever's reading, they can have a better idea of where you're located. So here we have an example of the transverse and longitudinal view of this lymph node here and this is at level three. So this is kind of right in the middle of the neck, a little bit more in front of the sternocleidomastoid. And that will give the reading provider an exact idea of where this lymph node was located.